Welcome, everyone, to the general gaming channel known as M12 Warthog Game. Hey guys, M12 Warthog Game here. I am back with another video, and today I'm doing another strategy guide video. And today I'm doing strategy guide on the game Civilization Revolution. Um. And I'm going to show you step by step on how to do this. Uh, before we get into this, I just want to let you know that this is a strategy I used to win. I tweak it a little bit when I play online with other players. And when we get to certain points, I'll notify you of that. This will probably be like 7 to 8 videos as I will probably do them 20 to 30 minutes apiece. And it's going to be a long series for, for strategy guy for just one whole game. As this takes a very long time to play. And if you have a few hours of free time, you can do, you can get like one game done, or maybe an hour depending upon how skilled people are and how long you want to take it, but it definitely will take like at least an hour and a half if you're playing against bots. And the reason I'm doing offline instead of online for strategy guide is because I want to be able to save my game and come back to it. You can't do that with online games. And also note, I have all DLC, all DLC, so wonders, new things. Like that you may not recognize it's because I have them and I'm gonna try and stick to um Talking about what you need to know and What is optional in terms of DLC like stuff that you have access to because you own this DLC But stuff that you don't actually need now. This is a cool intro and whatnot, but um you can watch it if you want Okay, so <clears throat> I already know how to play Now I'm gonna start here First thing you want to do <clears throat> is get out there and explore. The main thing you want to do. So you want to remove food production, put two on reg on material production. And what you want to do is get as many warriors as you can within a few turns. Pretty much what you want is four warrior units. One to stay You'll make the first three that you make, including the one that you start, to spread out to other areas and explore. The, s the fourth one will stay at your town and defend it. <clears throat> Usually, you do not start close enough to, um, to attack you right away, so waiting to make a few warrior units before you settle one down in your own village to defend is okay. Do note that sometimes people will explore a lot faster. If they get, like, units early on, such as, um, friendly villages giving you, um, caravans, although those are non-violent units as they just trade with cities and you get tax money off their goods and they get money as well. Although they'll get more money because it's their, um, thing. And holy crap, the best thing you can get is villagers from these. Now, the main reason why you should go after barbarian villages in the beginning, and this is one of the best things when it comes to the to strategy for the strategic value of this, is that you want to get money early on or something that can give you advantage. Now, what I have is villagers units. Now, enough, one of the main reasons why you would want to get money early on, if I go into who's winning, you can see there are many different milestones for um, all the different victories. Economic, technology, cultural, domination. Now, as Romans, you probably will easily be able to get cultural first. Although, if you're that far ahead, you could probably stay around for an extra, like, ten turns and get economic or technology or however long it takes. Or, if you're really pissed off at your enemies, you can just wipe them out with domination victory and take control of their capitals if you want. Although, all the other bars are black or gray, dark color. That means they're shaded in because we do not know who they are. They're unknown to us. We do not know who those civilizations are. This is just like um, actual ancient empires. The known world was very small to them. Ancient Greeks, their city-states, they didn't know much about any of the other city-states as the only areas that most of their areas was mountains and it would take forever to get to each other's places on foot and they didn't have airplanes or anything like that, or trains or anything, so getting there was super slow. And getting around medieval ages, a fiefdom, about 
about a few mile radius from the castle is all they knew as the known world. They didn't know much about what was out there. But you see, the same thing applies to us. We don't know what's out there until we explore it. Now, later on, you'll be able to have your city have a bigger area to work with for more tiles. Usually, it's the original eight around it. But it goes two, two up and down and two left and right, but not diagonal when you get a courthouse. And for that reason, you want to be at least four... You want to be at least four tiles away from your inner ring or at least five tiles from the direct spot in which you're placing down your um, city. Now, for me, I'm going to place it right here. Okay, maybe not. Now, I'm going to be honest. I was not expecting them to be there. Now, I should probably move this. Now, I was planning on putting it right here, but it's right next to that city, and that's going to screw them over. And us as well. So, I could move here, and I could found a city here, but because I'm too close to another city, that's going to be a problem for us. But I know that city exists, and that's actually beneficial to us. Now, of course, this may be a dead end. Now, I could go down there. Now, normally, what you would want in a city, for your second city, is either have it be high in, um, high production, or high trade. Now, this one here would work, but I don't like the fact that it, I don't really like the location of any of these places. So... After going around, I'm going to have to move it here. Now, of course, I'm going to move this warrior's unit here. And I'm going to take them out. Now, you can get very lucky and take out, like, three three barbarian villages and get three villagers units. Trust me, I've done it. But it was completely on a whim and just, like, pure luck. But it is possible. In case any of you are curious. But it's just like they randomly decide. Like, okay, this time they'll get 50 coins. This one will give them 30. They'll get a horseback unit from this place. And we've met Gandhi, I think. Here, let's have peace. Now, um, bot players are loosely based off of their own, um, off of the leaders. So... What I'm going to do is move this one down here. This one's pretty much all food production. And production. Which, I don't know if I want to do that. That only work if I get a bonus for mountains. I'm trying to find a place near the water. And I do not know where I want to do. Note. In online mode, players will capture your um will capture your villager units right off the bat. No questions like if they're left unprotected. Yeah, there's not much fertile grasslands here, I'm gonna be honest. No aside from me getting villager units, I can tell you this much. Actual units cost minus two from your current city level to form a villager's unit minus two from your population to go over to another area. This place has no production, but we can go here and get another villager's unit. Oh my god. How many villagers can we get? Okay. Now we can have this one explore the coast down here. You know, okay, so now I'm going to put that there. Now what I'm going to do is change this back. It's been a few turns. What I'm probably going to do is move my units around more. Villagers are also good if you want to explore. 
light like area says they can move two spaces I want to do no I'm not sure at the moment I I found a good a decent I would say to a decent place to start my um like village area this but most of these places don't have production in buildings would be super slow. I really can't expand this way because they're there. I would put one in the forest if it didn't screw over anything. But I guess putting one right here would work. But it would have slow food production. And seeing as I have an extra villager unit, I will do that. As much as I don't want to, it seems like the best strategy here. Now... Going along with this, you're also going to want to have to set up a barrier. By barrier, you mean just post some guards and have them uh, defend an area like this. That way, when they try to send, you know, units down here just being friendly, trying to explore and see what's out there, they don't get to see what you have in store. That sort of, not knowing where you're going to begin with in the start sort of helps you. Rather than them. And I think I'm going to found my second city right here. Low production. But um, if I can increase the tiles that we get from mountains. Or if I get um, a courthouse, I can have access to these areas. So in the beginning, it's not that good. But it will be later on. And we need s cities. What not. Okay. Now that we got... Um, our main city of Rome to level three. We have one on population, one working on food production, which increases population, one on production for buildings. And now we have a tree tile open, which is producing science points. And we're going to go into pottery. Now, the reason we go for pottery first is because after you get pottery, you can unlock the a new, new technologies that are available to research, such as masonry. Now, if you get masonry, that means only one thing. <clears throat> no, no, screw it. I'm putting city here and screw them over. May not make our town the best in the long run, but what it does is masonry, if we get it first, we get a free set of walls in our town. In, in, um our area wait wait why oh my god why why do you do this <sighs> normally it auto sets to one food one um yeah i got an extra thing so i'm just gonna have them join city and that pretty much automatically grows your city to just the maximum for that level so now it's automatically at level 3 now. And high production. But if I put this here, I can get good production and a lot of food. Meaning some food, but lots of production and I can get trade, which is good. Now, the main, main thing about trade is that it allows your cities to grow. From technology-wise and money-wise. Now, if I get another city, a fourth city, if I find a good place for it, I'm going to have that one make gold. But for now, I'm just going to have all three of these make science. And later on, I'll just have one make um, gold if I need to. Or I'll capture another city and have that make gold for me. Now, another thing you want to take note is that as Romans, we are master builders when it comes to roads. We can build roads very cheaply. As we will get that when I think we go into the next age, but it requires us to research a few technologies, which means we have to wait for that. But you want to know what? I do not mind waiting for that. So, now that we have that, I'm actually going to rush this because I'd rather have a whole army defending our main capital rather than just a few sets of warriors. Adding three of any unit together makes it an army. Um, it makes it a fleet if it's a naval unit, or a wing if it's an airborne unit. 
Although, I don't use much airborne units, as they have to fly over one of your cities within a certain amount of time. Like, it can't be outside a city more than two turns, otherwise it loses fuel and crashes. <clears throat> and that's a whole nother level of crap that I don't want to worry about, so... Plus, we don't get them for a long time, so you don't really have to worry about that early on as well. And I could rush that for all my gold, but, you know... I don't want that. Okay, pottery's done. Now you can do ceremonial burial, masonry, and a few others. But, masonry is the way to go if you want defense on your side. <clears throat> then after that, if you can get irrigation, which gives you plus one to, like, um, all your cities in terms of population, that's good, because growing cities at the beginning, or making lots of them, can be a good thing. Okay, defend. We have extra warriors, so we're just going to send them over to this city. And then from there, we'll send some up here to this border, and then maybe some over here. Uh, another thing we want to do... This one doesn't produce any trade yet, but as soon as it does, we'll have it make gold for a few turns. Everything's cheap early on. Not interested... Like, some person from a distant land's like, You're such a great person. Why don't I show you a gift of friendship and give you this cool, awesome item? Now, of course, like, I'm getting every few turns, I'm getting warriors that I probably will not need. And all my other towns are making them, so I'm going to build a wonder. <clears throat> now, why I'm making a wonder specifically is because, well... I don't want to build hanging gardens with only three population. It, like, gives it a major increase, but it gets bigger as your cities get bigger. Maybe when you're 10 or whatnot. <clears throat> but you can store production in something. So, so each turn, you if a city makes five production, each turn puts five production towards whatever you're making. If you decide to change it, all that production automatically goes into something new. So you could make something that has a lot of production and then switch it over to something when you need it. Like you'll know, like maybe say like you unlocked walls and I want to put that, all that production I've been storing up for one thing and put it into another. Now you could do that. Now of course I'm going to go for irrigation next. <clears throat> Let me think about it. Now this... Christopher Columbus will add extra gold to your treasury or a permanently increase the town's ability to make gold an increase of 50% or more. Now, as none of my towns are permanently going to be making gold at the moment, if I find a room for another town because you don't want to have at least three making, making all of this stuff because why not, <clears throat> then I would do that. Activate power. So, I could put it here in this town, but I'm not going to. I'm actually going to add it to treasury. These guys, if you have one early on, could also be used for exploration as they move two spots as well. <clears throat> but they can be captured by other units, so... Beware of that. Apparently, I have another warrior's unit. Send that up there to the border that we have... With, um, with whatchamacallit, the, um, Sh Zulu tribe. Okay, I forgot their names for a second. <clears throat> okay. So, this one's making gold for me. Okay, I'm going to move them there. Now I'm going to take this, complete that. Now I have two armies here. I'm going to have this one sit right outside here and defend. Now, of course, this one, one unit is going to go there. And then my turn. There's not much I can do, aside from... 
actually building a road to Rome. But now I can build a road there. So not my studies aren't all directly connected to each other, but all the roads in my empire go to Rome. So instead of taking five turns to go from one city to another, they can either take one turn if the unit starts in Rome, or it can go to one of my cities, from one of my cities to Rome, then to the other city if it wants to. And that's probably going to be the best thing. Early on, having the ability to move fast is not really that much of a deal because other people aren't going to be able to maneuver their troops fast. If they will not have roads to do so, although it, as I'm playing as the Romans, we will be able to get, get to move fast, have the ability to maneuver our troops around faster before everyone else as we get the reduction in cost for making these roads as well. But that would only be beneficial to us and we can only take advantage of that if you get your, if you have enough gold for it and you have a decently good Economy for your civilization as well. That wants us to make another, another um, technology. We're going to research Alphabet, and I'm going to end this video here. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did enjoy watching this video of Strategy Guide, let me know by leaving any comments, questions, or feedback for me in the comment section down below. Um, if you have specifically want to see me try for the one of four different um, victories I can get. Let me know in the comment section down below as well. And I will try and see if we can get them. Um, it's, but um, I'll try and go for what, what you guys suggest. But if, if there's no other option, like if my only option is not what you suggest, then I'm going to take that instead if it gets me victory. Because I'd rather get a victory than lose. But um, other than that, I will see you guys later in the